Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. Uh, as you can see, I've been a little bit busy around here. I finally got around to put the, the labels up on the signs here, or the containers. Uh, someone had mentioned, uh, well, Ron had uh, mentioned about having two separate uh, docking connectors here for the systems. And uh, I didn't actually, I don't think I actually mentioned this. The reason why I want to have this one separate than that one over there is this one's going to a printer that is continuously crafting plates. I have it on endless crafting. It's just going to keep going and going and going until it runs out of iron. If I run out of iron in that system there, then I can't actually make things like uh, like construction components, interior plates, girders, you know, that kind of stuff. So I just want to make sure that this thing here doesn't doesn't bleed me dry, basically. I, I could have some speed upgrades on there, but I'm not too worried about it right now. Uh, right now, I have got a lot of stuff going right now. I am got big plans as you can see we have 218,000 steel plates on in the system I have a whole bunch of bottles on me and I gotta fill them up still and I also have enough on me to build one co one large grid large grid cockpit and a solar panel and my plan today is I want to build an elevator from this asteroid actually tethered from the bottom of this asteroid right here no oh, light doesn't work that well that well down here but from here, right down to the planet, I want to try to get it sort of, sort of center. So I believe that's where the base is. I'm not 100% sure, but I figure we're gonna come try to aim right around here. So at least when we hit the ground, we're somewhat, somewhat parallel. So we're not like 20 degree angle or anything like that. Because once we get down there, we're not gonna be able to move. Now I have been thinking about an elevator idea, and. Uh, I know there are limits in this game, but you know if you work with those limits and work with, the, work with the game mechanics, there are things you can do. I always worry about these guys. I was on here. Uh, well, I've actually been on here for a little while, getting waiting for stuff to craft here. But I had a a commercial freighter about two kilometers right over there. Did it do anything? I was watching, watch him fly by. He just left me alone, so I left him alone. And we'll definitely have to make some guns one of these days to. Have, have some fun with that. But anyways, uh, yeah, so let me get these bottles filled and then uh, we'll start going down. Okay, I am ready. I do have to do a quick charge up though. A uh, quick heal up actually. And keep lying on the ground a little too hard. And uh, I don't, for some reason I don't have health respawn on. Or regen. Which is fine, whatever. I have this. And I've always wondered what happens when you have more than three bottles in your inventory. You get three plus. I actually have, I think I have like eight hydrogen bottles and six oxygen or something like that. The reason why I have the cockpit and the solar panel is to charge my suit. Because that has always been the biggest problem with EVAs with me is always the suit running out. Alright, so I'm going to take whatever I can. 132,000 plates. And look at the weight on that. 2,600 tons, and I can fly like a bird. I'm pretty sure if I hit the ground carrying this much weight, though, it'd probably hurt a lot. So my idea for the elevator is it's going to have to be two shafts. Come on. Get your head out of the gutter. I said shafts. Anyway, uh, let's see. So we're, I basically want to try to figure out where this center of what I see here is and so it seems to be around here so let's see if I can actually place the block in the right spot uh, I may or may not uh, design something to actually build this for me I haven't quite figured it out yet now the question I want to actually have is because I need to have two beams for this let's actually go up here a little bit Maybe going to be two beams. It's going to have to be, I think, I do have to do a little bit of math, but I think around 12, uh, 12 blocks apart. And let me, okay, let's just make sure we're aiming the right way. I'll probably have to do trial and error on this. So let me get something started. I'll bring you back. Okay, that seems pretty good. 
Uh, basically, I was having trouble actually getting it right. So what I just did is I stood in front of the asteroid and lined up the block the way I wanted it. And since it's set to the auto rotate, it's actually going to rotate with my view. And I just started building that way. So I'll figure out the size once I get down there. I have a long way to go. Uh, fortunately, I, I'm pretty sure I have enough plates to do this. I believe these are about two meters apart. Two meters long, I should say. So I'll see in about 20,000 frames or so. Or 20,000 plates, that is. Well, technically, technically plates. Anyway, I'll be back. All right, well, I'm about almost two kilometers away and it's time for my first charge up here. Uh, fortunately, I do have God power, so I can adjust the sun if I need to. Uh, or, there you are. Realistically, I should have had this connected to the station so I can at least charge off the station. Where's the sun? There, the sun is... Where are you? Right there. All right. And we'll rotate. I'm going to fill you in. And I'm actually curious to see how many plates I've gone through already. Only a thousand. Actually, I actually think it was less than that. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you my little charging point. So it looks like... It might be... A kilometer or two across, off, but that's fine. Just all the more reason to make a high-speed transport system. Really? Uh oh, am I breaking the game already? Yep, <laughs> uh, that didn't take long. Hmm. Alright, I'll bring you back for the next slide first. So, I misplaced the block on the side here, where as you can see we're about almost four and a half kilometers out. And it's been doing this for almost a minute now. I can't move the mouse. Nothing's happening. I think I broke the game. I think I push the limits. Uh, I know it's not the block count, and I think I just want to be the sheer size of it, but I have seen that someone has built a, built a, a road to the moon. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> that was a long leg. Alright, well, I guess no more mess ups. Anyway. I'll be right back. Okay, so everybody who thought this was a very stupid undertaking by me and that it was going to take me an obscenely amount of time, seen amount of time to actually do, raise your hands. I don't see everybody's hand up, but I have made it, and I have gone a very, a very long way, uh, just over forty-three kilometers. And I'm not going to lie, this was <laughs> definitely not the smartest thing I've done in the world, but. Surprisingly, I don't have any block leg. Not building anyways. Uh, last update was, what, four kilometers? And it was about two minute leg. Let's actually turn that off so we can actually see it all the way up. It's going to be great when there's another one in every orange. Uh, yeah, at about 15 kilometers, it was taking around 15 to 20 minutes to take off one block. The problem is I was having to charge my suit with a, a cockpit and a solar panel. So that was half an hour that I had to wait to remove those two blocks so I can continue going on because I have to keep this a one by one for the elevator car. Uh, yes, there's going to be two of them, but um, yeah, so then yeah, I got actually have the, the ship up there, the black one about, I don't know, what, 14 kilometers up. I was actually parking it on the grid. Now you can park stuff on the grid and uh, take it off with the landing gear no problem it's just when I remove a block for some reason it's just an insane amount of lag uh, but so now I have an idea of something I want to build and I was hoping I was gonna get a bit of landing area we're actually pretty pretty, pretty horizontal I'm surprised uh, pretty parallel with the, the center of the grab uh, planet unfortunately we're about nine and a half kilometers away from the main base but that's not big, not big of a deal. Uh, I had to farm a lot of stuff going, a lot of iron. I got 
tons of plates going for this project. Now, what I want to do is I want to build sort of an automated welder going all the way up. And it's going to be self-powered. It's going to go up using solar panels and all that stuff. And it's going to have a cockpit on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue building this second pillar going all the way up. Because for my car, I'm going to need two pillars. And, uh, and that's just so I don't have to worry about actually building anything on the grid. And then waiting at this point, I'm going to say it's going to be at least 45 minutes to an hour. Then I'm going to sit there with my grinder out with sparks flying from it. And all I'm going to hear is that. That's all I get to hear. And sparks. And that's what it was. It was just insane. But so, yeah. Um, so now i got to figure out a way of how I'm going to put this on here. And I've been thinking about using a, a piston and a couple of rotors. So I do have a lot of plates on me right now. I've got 125,000, I think. I think I've got about 700,000 at least. I built four more assemblers and stuff, and I'll show you that once uh, we, I go to fill this con container up. But I want to first actually want to find out how many blocks there actually is. Uh, to actually go here and grab a, a terminal. Now, I don't plan on removing this thing because I know that's going to be an insane amount of lag. We're just going to place that there and fill it up. I'm actually going to fill up a few of these plates so I have a solid area to actually work on for placing the, the welder. Alright, so what do we have here? We have 16,759 blocks. So about, about 17,000. So I gotta multiply that by 24 so I know how many plates I have to put in there because when I get up to the top I actually want to dismantle this fly back down here and set it up again because this car is going to be held onto the, the post with gravity but surprisingly it's actually not too bad uh, does it actually tell you what my PCU is even though it doesn't really matter there we go 17,000 so it's it, it's not bad because it's just armor blocks it's a lot of triangles though uh, the good mass I have no idea the fact that I've got the 50 kilometer draw range is quite something. Anyways, uh, let me fill, fill a few of these in and we'll start getting the carriage on, or the, the welder on. So I seem to have run into an issue. And an issue that could result in me having to go back to the top and do this all over again. Uh, the issue is, I can't place any blocks on top. Place them on the side. Either side, you can even place them down below. But for some reason, I can't place them on top. Which means, I'll probably have to let this thing go up, give us a ride all the way, and then I'll probably have to build all the way back down. Because this is the spacing I need here. Is I need uh, a nine block gap between the rails for the car. I'm halfway there, and i got to continue on, so... Yeah, we're going to have to do this the hard way, I guess, I guess. But anything I do is never easy. So let me bring you back. Okay, I think I might actually be able to get it on just right here. Uh, yeah, actually... Give me a second. Actually, I think I should be able to get it on from here. Uh, I'm, I, I forgot, I actually need one block between the container and the rail. And basically what it's going to be is a large container full of plates with a conveyor attached to it with a, uh, a welder attached to the end of it. So I do that. So now as long as I can get a wheel on a rotor in here, I should be okay. So then it was going to be... Actually, hang on a second here. I should adjust the braking force on that. Uh, that was lift and braking torque, okay. <laughs> Just to make sure it doesn't drop down while I'm trying to do this. Uh, this should actually work though, in theory. Everything is in, in theory with me. Uh, I wanted to make this thing yellow, actually. Just because. Uh, I have designed the elevator car already, so what was it? One, two, three. And then we're gonna go up. It was like there. This is going to be repeat on both sides. And then what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have a rotor. Instead of a wheel, I'm going to put a rotor here. And it won't let me place it. Oh, i got to extend the piston a little bit more. That's easy to do. Uh, yeah, 
something going on here. Let's see. Uh, piston extend one. I have adjusted already. Let's go to point eight, I guess. Let's see what happens. Actually, you know what? This could actually work for us. Let's see how it works. Okay. All right, it's going to move back. Yeah, I was going to use this rotor to rotate just slightly. Uh, I was looking at the, the angle here. Where is it? It's at zero. I want to go with positive. So we'll go positive. Let's see here. Yeah, it's this one here because it's, it's weight. Of course it is. All right, uh, rotor lock for now. Braking torque is going to be... I guess it doesn't have to be that high. Go 0 0.1. Nope, 0 0.1. And let's see. Uh, I want lower limit, 0. And upper limit, uh, 1 degree. Now let's go ahead and turn that on, actually. It is on, and... Even moving extremely slow. Let's move that up to 0 0.1. Alright, now it should have moved it out just enough for me to get the rotor in. Do that, and then I wanted to go with a small wheel. Uh oh. Uh, I'll, I'm going to lock that rotor just quickly here. Uh, what was I looking for? I was looking for the wheel. Yes, physics physics is going to be my friend with this game. Just like it has been in the past. Alright, so let's go ahead and just lock these rotors. Uh, let's see. Lock you. Off. And. Vibration is gone. At least, sort of. So, yeah, it's going to be like that. And then we're going to go on this side here. And we're going to do, was it one, two, up, another two. Put another rotor here. And it's not going to let me place it there. Ah, this is where I go and unlock this one. Now, I'm going to do a save here, just in case something happens. So then I'm going to unlock that one. And I'm, because it's powered, it shouldn't really matter. And that was lift, and unlock you. Now, in theory, the weight's going to pull this down. It's going to push that wheel up against here, and then I should be able to actually place the rotor. No. Okay, we got to extend the piston again then. Or, that might help. Really? Hmm. Oh, could I still be locked, maybe? Oh, the breaking torque. Maybe that did it. It should. Hmm. All right, well, then uh, we're going to go back with this one. I'm going to set the torque on this really low, just so it doesn't break anything. Reverse it. Let's see if that gives us enough room to put this on. No. Hmm. I wonder if that piston's going to go out a little bit more. Let's try that. And then we'll extend this to 0 0.9. Hmm. Not quite making it. Let me figure this out. Okay, I got it, but the game's not liking it. It's banging around here, so I gotta be quick about this. Okay. Get that on there. So I can turn that off. 
Alright, uh... Yeah, I'll just turn you off. I'm actually gonna lock... Did I lock you? No, I didn't. I don't know what I unlocked, but... Anyway, so that's my idea, and then I'm just gonna come across another arm here with, uh... A block or a road or something here, just to line it up, and I'll bring you back when it's time to start scaling. Oh yeah, I will get the conveyor coming up top here. That was for that. I think that was still number one. Yes, uh, it's a basically conveyor, conveyor. And then I was gonna have an elbow here, and then let's put the welder on top. Trust me, I do know what I'm doing. Uh, no, I don't know the extent on the actual welder, so I'm going to place another conveyor there, and then we'll put the welder on top. And i got to lift it back to do this, I think, unless it has a smaller hitbox. Perhaps. Or it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Let's try that again, shall we? Perfect. And there we go, so that's what's going to be the wheel should technically turn because it's going to be on the rotor which is going to sit for free and then as i there's going to be a few more blocks here now there is one other thing i'm worried about and uh that's it going side to side on the track so i have thought about some guide rails let's see hang on uh, like so yes no Probably won't put a block, probably a rotor if I can in there. Interesting. Oh, did that wheel snap to the thing, or is it? I guess we're going to have to try it just like this. Anyways, let me fill this in and I'll bring you back. Okay, I think we're just going to go with this. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to actually lock those two rotors. Lock them and set the uh, braking torque force on them because I want to get them on off this piston. All right, I'm gonna assume that these ones here. So let's go ahead and lock you braking torque all the way because I'm gonna be loading oh about 2,000 tons of plates into this thing. Rotor lock, braking torque all the way. And uh, what happened there? Yeah, breaking torque all the way up. Alright, and I'm going to do a save. Pull out my grinder. And go somewhere to save, hopefully. Now, in theory, the weight of this is going to hold it down. That wheel is going to push up against this side. This side wheel is going to push up against the top. And hopefully pull that welder away. So, let's see what happens. Okay, so friction is not a thing in this game. Or it wasn't going to work with those. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this. Okay, we're going to try something different. I think I know what it was. Uh, something tells me I should do a save first. Actually, at this point, I don't think it really matters what I do. If it's going to work, it's going to work. It's going to fail, it's going to fail. But what I figured what was going on is... It was the rotors themselves, the rotor tops that were sitting on the posts and not the, the wheels. So, let's uh, see what happens. I'm not going to worry about alignment because I don't think this thing's going to derail, if, if anything. I should have saved, you know why? Because I forgot to lock those rotors. Ha 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 ha. Alright, well that didn't work. So I'm going to try something differently then. What I was trying to do is I was trying to use the rotors to try to line it up, but I pulled it right off the track somehow. And I'm clipped. Oh, this ought to be interesting. Hmm. Well, what I was planning on doing was actually just lowering this thing right up the plates. Throw a couple thousand tons in there and see what happens. Right? But all we can really do... Alright, let's see what happens. Uh, it's clipped, that's what happened. But yeah, my theory was that I was going to climb up, climb up there. It looks like I'm going to have to do this myself. 
Yes. And of course I have to repair it. Okay, that moved. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to do it that way, so. Oh, wait, what's going on? Nothing. Oh yeah, my plan was to power those wheels and have a welder going up with it, but Oh yeah, I think I think it was try to use actual wheels. Hmm. Let's try that. Well, I tried a few different things and I think about the best thing I can do is do it by hand. So I might have to uh, ferry a few loads back and forth until I can get close enough to my ship and then go from there. Fortunately, I have a huge inventory size, so I should be good to go. But anyways, uh, off I go. Okay, this is actually a few days later. Uh, you remember me talking uh, talk about how this was a really stupid undertaking on my part? It's done. Uh, let me take that off so you can see. Uh, needless to say, this I didn't realize the, like, the sheer scale of this project or maybe the wow factor just kind of overtook it or uh, sort of, you know, maybe blind to it. But I went on the Discord server and I begged for help. And Matya yeah, was so kind to dedicate pretty much the entire day to help me get this thing done. And it stretches all the way to the ground. There has been issues with this. Um, we had to, well, one of, that was one of the biggest issues was energy. Like, we spent a good 12 hours finishing this up. Uh, the, I was trying to use a mining ship. It wasn't working out too well, and I'll take you down there, and I'll show you what I've got. I'll probably make a blueprint of it and throw it up on the on the workshop there. But uh, we had some issues with the grid. Uh, needless to say, there is absolutely no chance of putting any block on this and taking it off. If I take it off, I'm not going to be touching my game for a couple hours at least. Uh, there is another issue too, but it seems to be okay up here. And uh, one of the issues was uh, we I was talking about down there was not being able to place on top of the grid. Now this is poses a bit of an issue for what I plan on doing because I want to build an elevator car around this, but in such a way that it hugs around it. But I can't be placing a block there, building a, the the carriage, and then removing that block. If I do that, then you know, I'll be waiting a week at least. Uh, the total count is about 35,000 blocks and we used about 840,000 steel plates. Uh, I did do a little bit of uh, uranium mining before I started uh, getting this point all done here and I do have uranium. I got enough for a reactor and uh, yeah so I'll, I'll give you a tour on the way down to the bottom where we start building. Before I head down, I'm actually going to talk about what my theory is on this high-speed elevator, since it's, I actually wanted to use this as an example. Now, I don't know if you actually pay attention to when I was building this, but what I've had to do to get the counter-rotation is one rotor is actually spinning twice as fast as the other in the opposite direction. Uh, and I'll show you this here. Uh, let's actually do this where you can see the rings turning. So, basically what I have is I have reactor rotor. I have this one spinning at 5 RPM. I have the outer rotor, which is spinning at 5 RPM. And I have the inner rotor, so the fuck out of here, which is spinning at negative 10. Now the reason for that is this rotor is spinning this way at 5 RPM. I know it doesn't seem like a lot of speed, but that's also, it can go up to 60. So then that means the rotor that's attached here is rotating at 5 RPM as well. So if you, I were to turn this rotor 5 RPM as well, it's actually going to go 10 RPM this way. So it's going to go twice as fast as this ring. But in relation to this ring, it's going to be moving as fast as this ring is moving to the ship if you get my drift. And then if I did the same with the reactor rotor, have them, all three of them going the same way, the reactor rotor would be traveling, turning three times as fast as the outer ring. Now, my theory is if I use the large wheels, which are... Not on the hot bar. Let me grab these here. Uh, we have these really, really, really big wheels. Now these wheels, come, our wheels come on suspensions and without suspensions. They come. They don't have suspensions for a reason. Now this big boy here is a staggering five by five. 
No, I've actually sort of used a GPS to figure out the actual size of it. It's about it's about 12 and a half meters in diameter, which works out to about a 40 meter circumference. The rotors can do 30 meters a sec. Uh, 30 me uh, sorry. 60 RPM. It doesn't go by meters per second. It goes by revolutions. So every second, it's going to be going around once, which means 40 meters a second. You add a second rotor doing the same thing. That makes 80 meters a second. Third rotor, 120. We've already broken the speed limit. So if I have 12 rotors, I should be able to achieve 500. Whether or not the game can handle it or even acknowledge it is another story. And then at the other end of these things, I'm going to have going to be using link uh, merge blocks, and then another rotor that's going to be uh, no breaking torque, and it's going to be unlocked, and that's just going to be a bearing more or less because I'm going to be using more or less clamps to hold it on, uh, get the traction because that was a problem with the. The mining vessel that I, uh, not the mining vessel, the little welder I was trying to build there. I just love how the asteroids cast shadows on this. That's amazing. But the problem with the welder is it was relying on gravity to hold it onto the rails. Now, I have heard talk and rumors of this so called clang. I have yet to meet this so called individual, but I'm sure. We'll cross paths one of these one of these days, but I have nothing to be worried about. But this is the the little welding ship I tried to build, and I have no idea what I was going to call it. Something like the Green Hornet or the Whisper, or something like that. But I'm actually going to go ahead and create a blueprint of this for you guys, and uh, yeah, then I'll meet you down there when you get there. But yeah, so more or less, instead of trying to use gravity to actually hold it onto the tracks, that going to be basically pinching. The rails with giant wheels and that is that is the plan now my only real worry with this and um, the fact that I don't get the trash I desire but from what I've seen from you know even the video in the game menu it is technically possible and I think it's just because I'm not getting enough grip on here uh, but I'm worried that something's gonna happen to these blocks uh, I have seen clipping issues as we saw with the container there. Oop, this is one of our charging points. And yeah, so I have no idea what's going to happen. you got to love this view too because I'm connected. I'm actually docked to the grid. It acts as one giant grid. So basically you can actually sort of see the orange line there and it goes right up to the asteroid up there. Uh, I try not to go up to the, the asteroids when I'm up at this view because it just... I get these sudden lag spikes, but it's definitely a good way to see the see the planet from a bird's eye view, right? There's another charging point there. A little yellow thing behind the the rail on this side here. Let me see if I can get over there. That was a little yellow mining ship I had over there, and this is the black one I made when I first went up to space. It was definitely definitely an epic project. Just this alone. Uh, yeah, not if my elevator idea works. Oh, it's going to save so much time. Yeah, I'm starting to realize now these little ships I made aren't exactly meant to handle my expanded inventory. This little guy can barely slow down. And at this point, a, a, like a total backup has been made. So if anything goes wrong at this point, no matter what, I have this spot right here. So now, the biggest issue I've had with this, like I said, is the fact that I can't actually place blocks onto it on top. Uh, another issue I have with this is I can't actually build in or uh, take any blocks off. So I want to try something uh, because I got to get a carriage on here. I want to I actually want to try to use the link blocks and see if they're actually going to. Uh, you know, what I mean, because I'm technically connected a second grid. If maybe I can just remove that second link block that's not connected to this grid and avoid the lag. So that is the plan. So let me uh, figure out exactly where I'm going to start building and I'll bring you back. Okay, I got it. So I do have a nine block gap. So I'm going to start on the fourth. One, two, three, four. Sorry, the fifth. 
I'm going to start here, but I'm going to go down. I do plan on covering this all up eventually. Uh, it's going to, the frame is going to be having a one block gap. It's going to be five around here at the narrowest point. So it's going to be one there and then, ah, uh, geez. And then that's going to be the outer frame. So then I need to come up here because then and hopefully I can disconnect from here. Now, what I'm hoping, yeah, I want to keep the, the link block down here or the, uh, the merge block. And I'm hoping I can actually place the other one on top or if I have to actually move it. I think it has to be powered. I'm not sure, but let me get this set up and then I'll bring it back. Okay, that's on there, but suddenly I had like a five second lag spike. Ooh, I'm worried about this. So then the question is, can I place another one on top? Probably not. No. Uh, let's try to drop it, see what happens. And then I think I just have to power them both. Okay, they've connected. I, don't, I have no idea whether they get, if they're getting power or where they're getting power from. So I'm going to do a quick save here and see if we can actually take this block out. Let's see how bad it is. Oh, no. I should have. I think we're on to something. But I was saying I could have just gone to the control panel and unlocked them. Because once I get this up and up on there, it's gonna be clamped there. So uh yeah, let me get the frame set up. So I've got the same problem here, and I think it's because it's actually connected a connected grid. So I could either A unpower the block, unlock them, but they'll reconnect. Unless I turn them off. Let's try that. Turn it off didn't work. Let's try something else. Okay, this is what we do. Reconnect the actually had to disassemble a block and place it again. But we build out and then we actually re-tether this. So then that way it doesn't move. So that's down and put a couple more blocks on. And I can place on top here, that's just because uh, it's on the side technically, but that is not connected. So now, uh, let's actually turn it off. Let's try that. And I'll keep recording in case things go horribly, horribly wrong here. It worked. It worked. I'm not going to touch that. We are, however, going to get rid of that. I avoid the lag. Awesome. So it appears I have done something wrong. I was cutting away some blocks. Uh, still trying to, the only way I can do this is building a separate grid. But, nope, oh, that was almost a crash. But yeah, just this moving on the ground. I don't know what's going on, if it's a voxel update that's causing this but yeah I don't know what's gonna happen here the ships go fine but this one drop block and I could be waiting an hour well I'll be it seems the deconstruct light has been reduced to a mere few seconds I was a little worried when I saw this, but I was patient enough, and a couple more seconds here, and we should be good. So I think I should be able to build right onto the grid, and that just makes it so much easier because, yeah, I, I can't take the chance of anything rolling. Uh, I did have to make myself a few sets of new tools because I died a few times, more than a few times, and needless to say, when you die up there and your body comes down here you don't find your body and but anyway so let me get the frame set up I have thought outside the box and I have figured it out so I'm gonna 
Uh, what I did is I put a rotor on here. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. Braking torque all the way up. Because, as you will see in just a moment, get the right blocks out, I still can't build the here. I'm stuck on something. <laughs> still can't build there. This is technically connected. Technically, technically, it's connected. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. I can build on top because that's a separate grid. So this, if this is locked, I should be able to place a block there. We tether it, and excuse me, oh, there. excuse me a second. Sorry about that. I can put build on top, so I can actually replant this and take all that stuff out, and then be not have to worry about that rotor moving anywhere. So this is how I'm going to build my frame. No, that's fine. I don't care. And I don't think it's going to matter if it touches the other grid. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it won't touch the ground. Really? Interesting. All right, I'm just going to have to build it off here then. So here's the frame. So what's going to happen is there's going to be... Oh, I missed, uh, a few blocks down here. I'm gonna do a nice blue too because that was my tiny little sketch I did pixel by pixel in Photoshop. Two, three. So then what it is it's gonna be is there's gonna be uh let me get to uh power one. Bring out our kraken bait or sorry, clang bait. Oh let me correct myself on that. And what it's gonna be is there's gonna be four rotors, one on either corner now. I do realize to realize I have that in the wrong spot. That's actually supposed to go there. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't equip my grinder, but oh jeez, what was I saying here? Um, and then make sure everything is locked, labeled, and I have everything in my inventory for the next step. So this is where I'm hoping that things are going to work out. So I'm going to be using guide wheels. And basically, there's going to be a wheel here on all four of these rotors. They're locked with maximum braking torque for now. And that's just to keep this thing from moving. And what's going to prevent, uh, avoid, hmm, already we have an issue. That rotor seemed to have moved. Yeah, so this could be quite interesting but basically I gotta get these wheels on here uh, these ones are gonna be the issue the other ones I'm not too worried about because of how I'm gonna be sort of placing them or having them I didn't want to have to actually do the same thing with these ones here but it looks like I might have to Let's see this one will place will it not that one will place maybe it's one of those things where you gotta find that sweet spot I'm gonna say no though it's almost like the whole thing's got to be shifted over just millimeters. So, good thing it's on a rotor. Ha ha ha. Let me try that. All right, with a little bit of uh, brute force, I was able to actually nudge it over enough to get those two wheels on. Uh, so far, things seem to be stable. stable. I have uh, released the power and the tension of that rotor, unlocked it, relocked it, so it's not forcing itself anywhere in either way. Uh, so I'm actually recording this again because OBS kind of uh, decided not to properly record. But anyways, so what's going to happen is there's going to be uh, four main drive wheels here. There's going to be two of them here. These are going to be five by five, and they're going to be on either side of this rail. So uh, these are just to keep the, like, basically keep the drive wheels on the rails themselves. And then uh, the drive wheels, there's going to be two of them on the bottom. The, the, the two big ones are going to be down here. They're going to be opposite side of the rail just to, to keep it equal pressure. And then the other two are going to be up on this side. And that's one to keep it compact and two to keep the pressure or the force on equal sides of the rail. As long as this is symmetrical and moves at a uniform rate, it should be good. And so then, yeah, and then uh, so what's going to happen is there's going to be, I'm actually doing this red, but there's going to be a rotor at either end. Uh, they're both going to be set to 
basically push the, the, the axle, which is going to be two blocks up here, up against the rail. And that's just to make sure that the wheels actually get a good grip on the track so it doesn't slide, doesn't move, anything like that. And hopefully achieve the 500 meters a second. I'm hoping I'm going to get, but I, I'm not expecting it. But if it works, it works. If it doesn't, eh, I'll try it again some other time. Uh, so yeah, then I'm going to have, at the end of this tensor bar, there's going to be 12 rotors, which is going to be the main axle. And all these rotors are going to be rotating in the same direction, like I was showing you up at the stellar ray up there. And then the other the, the rotor on the other end is actually going to be uh, uh, freewheeling. It's like this, just unlocked, zero braking torque. Uh, it's just basically a, a, cat, a bearing, as you would. And yeah, so that's going to be on the other tensor bar here. And so the two wheels are here. Two wheels are going to be up on this corner just to keep it compact and evenly powered. And then there's going to be a reactor there, a cockpit on top, and that should be it. So now... I'm going to fill everything in because I realize this episode is getting quite long and I've been I'm chatting away for no apparent reason, uh, even though I've been dragging this project on for about a week now, so I will be right back. So it seems that the pistons are actually a little bit taller. And I was uh, thinking about that rotor displacement, so I want to check this out quickly here. I do have them all labeled. So I want to try something. Eight divided by uh, one hundred divided by eight would be, or uh, because it goes in millimeters here. Let's try eighty. Eighty would be eighty-three. Oh, really? Alright, negative zero point. Let's see what that is. If it does anything. I don't think it did. Let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, I figured it out. Yeah, you can actually adjust it on the fly there. So, yeah, that works. I thought I'd bring you back for this uh, quick last little part here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually be placing a merge block on here. And yes, I have tested to see if you can place merge blocks on the wheels. Oh, it does have to go further back. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to take a piston off then. Rotor, I mean. Alright, so I got, got that rotor locked and labeled. And that is <laughs> definitely not a merge block. Alright, and so i got to pull that in. Go ahead and do that. Uh, I just gotta remember, make sure I remember what everything is actually labeled. So let's bring that in a little bit and see how that looks. See if I get that on there. Not quite. Alright, we'll try a little bit more. And then in theory, when I join it, the, when I finish both those merge blocks, it should connect as one yeah oh wait hold on did I actually unlock that Energy low. Uh, yes I know I know uh, all right let's try that not quite so that's got to go back a little more in fact let's do this I know it's taking a little long, but I'm just showing you what I what I do to do these things. So I'm at 25 on these, so I'm going to pull these back to 30 centimeters. And that should be enough. Okay, negative 0 0.30. And I should be able to get that merge block in there just like so. When I do that, we will finish them both up. So they were supposed to be green, but that's besides the point. So now if I move those back to the, the original uh, 25 centimeters. We have connection. So now these two, these rotors here, that one and that one over there are going to work together to keep this wheel 
and the one on the other side up against the rail and sort of pinch it. And then it's going to be the same thing on the top except mirrored. And that's how I plan on doing this. So, yeah, I'll bring you back when this is done or have a disaster. Let's hope it's done. So now for the moment of truth. I have everything all tightened up. Uh, there's one thing I forgot to do. Actually, two things. One, we got to put fuel in there or cockpit there. And we're going to drag a little bit of uranium over here. Just 50 for now in case things go wrong. I know I can always save and reload, but let's see what happens. Uh, it's going to come crashing down. I know it. Well, I'll be damned. It's clunking. Don't sound too good. Let's get the guy saved. Let's go for a ride. Let's go for a very, very, very fast ride. Uh, I was wrong about the speed on the road. It's actually 30 RPM, not 60. So uh, we shall see what happens. Go in here and let's just go turn them all on. And it doesn't want to move. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, it is a ship. Okay, why are we not moving? Did I forget something? I'm not too sure. Let me have a look at this. I figured it out. They were all still locked. All right. Yeah, they're slipping. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to do. Let's try increasing the torque, shall we? Torque is all the way up. Hmm. Let's see, the wheels aren't even turning. It's almost like it's detached. Let's have a quick look here. Let's go to. Still got 11 because 11's the last one. That's the one that just keeps on spinning. And I have no idea what that's about. Let's try something here. This could be bad, but. Yeah. Now the rotors are going to different directions. I keep hitting the wrong thing. Hmm. Same. So I think it would be a suit detached, but that's only a certain distance. Oh, I'm wondering if. Okay, those aren't locked. Okay, and. It was the other one. The... Oh, geez, what are those? What did I have there? The burning tether and the wheel. I don't know, that's not them. Hmm. Interesting. The wheels don't have to be powered or anything. They don't even show up in the game here. Well, let me ponder this. Well, I think I'm going to have to end this one off here. I tried a few different things and it's just not working. Uh, for some reason, the wheel itself doesn't actually want to turn. Um, I actually had to reload the save because this I took the blocks out this actually slid down and that wheel over there wasn't actually touching nothing was turning I don't know if it got to do with the grid blocks that's been unlocked those are turning but for some reason some of them are turning backwards and I do not know what's going on so I'm just checking here again so that one was technically a wheel that was uh, would have been W2 
W2 is unlocked, no breaking torque. I don't think turn it off actually. <gasps> oh my god, so they actually have to be turned off. Oh, hang on. Fortunately, I have many saves of this. So I'm going to hop back in here. Let's do this quickly here. Uh, so yeah, it was just the wheels. Go ahead and turn those off. And there's that lag. And something broke. Yes, it already broke it once already. I think I got my torque up a little too high. Maybe that tore right to the wheel. But they're moving. Not they were. Oh, there's the lag. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this one here. This has been going on for too long. I gotta just put this to rest for now. But uh, next episode, I'm gonna get this tweaked up and hopefully have it up and running. We're on the right track, but I gotta go back to a previous save and go from there. But anyways, okay, uh, I'm not sure, but I think I may have got it. So let us find it. All right, so let's turn uh, turn all these on first, and we'll turn those off. And it came off. I should reseat that. All right, we're going to try one more time. I got everything unlocked. Uh, I actually reversed the rotors because that was actually the problem I was having. So let's go ahead and turn those on. And I'm getting lag, so something's breaking. I even tried to turn the torque down because they were tearing up the rails. Yeah. Clearly not supposed to be working like this. Yeah. I just chewed up those blocks. I'm wondering if it's because they got the tension of the other things too much. I should have everything unlocked. Let's see what happens when I get my game back. Okay, I have tried many, many, many times to get this thing to actually move. Uh, it's not the fact that it's getting stuck anywhere. I have put atmospheric thrusters on either side. I put 10 of them on and I could lift it up, no problem. But for some reason, the wheels don't want to cooperate with the blocks. And if I give enough torque, then the blocks break. Now, I do realize I may use light armor blocks for these. I could use the heavy armor blocks. Uh, let me, there you go, light armor block. I could go with the heavy armor block, but that requires a lot of steel plates and a lot of grids and a lot of time to rebuild it. So I might have to put this one on the back burner for now. I was hoping this was gonna work. In theory, it does work. Uh, there's a couple of clips there. When I, me testing, you can see that uh, the rotors are spinning progressively faster, so the speed limit can technically be broken this way. It's just with this particular setup, it's not going to work realistically. I'd have to have the tens tension on those as tight as I can, the torque on all these as tight as I could go, and have it basically doubled up with uh, heavy armor blocks all the way. But anyways, you live, you learn, you try new things, you learn from your mistakes, and things can only get better. But anyways, I am going to definitely leave this here. I have a save file where it's still actually tethered to the link block there, so it's not going to go anywhere. And I'll, I'm going to leave this saved there. And, you know, we may end up using this rail for some purpose down the road. But anyways, I thank you all for watching. hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave me a like. And I will see you in the next one. Later.